Yes, hello everyone, and welcome back to another developer live stream for Beyond the Wire. Uh, for anyone new here, Beyond the Wire is a World War I first person shooter coming to Steam Early Access this year. Uh, and it's currently available to wishlist right at this moment in time. Um, so we're making a little bit of a habit of um, doing some in depth looks at some of the environments that we're bringing to Early Access. Uh, and so we thought we'd uh, jump back on tonight and have a look at Freeze, which we revealed yesterday. So as you can see, as always, I'm joined by Creative Director Bruno and uh, Josh. Hi, everyone. Uh, Josh, technical level designer, is also back with us tonight. So um, we're going to take some time out to uh, show some additional footage from the map, as well as give you all a little bit of information on the development side of it uh, and all that good stuff. Um, so last week we updated the community with some uh, information regarding the naming conventions for the levels. So I think we should start there, Bruno, if we can kick off and maybe just give a little bit more information on the reasons as to why we've gone with this new direction. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everyone. Uh, so um, our, our design direction when it comes to the levels, it, it continues to evolve, right? And it's it's always going to be like that during this uh, uh, during this phase, and and then when we go into early access. But um, as as we, we uh, uh, reach that that conclusion, that you know, um, as you guys saw on the on the on that blog post, or th this fronts that we're representing, they're so massive uh, uh, in in terms of area, actually, uh, like covering a massive portion of the continent. Uh, and it, it, we thought it would be really hard to really uh, represent these areas uh, all in just one map for each. So uh, we would end up losing a lot of the, you know, like a lot of interesting elements and a lot of the d detail that we wanted to show. Um, and for that reason, we decided to really uh, um, kind of like break those areas apart into different, let's call them like sub levels or like smaller uh, or more focused levels. Uh, so thinking just about the, the Musergon offensive, of course, this was like this giant push, uh, it extended for hundreds of kilometers, uh, and, and we really wanted to show different areas within, you know, that, that one push, for instance. Uh, and for that reason, uh, the, our, our, our map that was previously known as just the Ergon map, uh, was renamed to, to Anzancourt, which is, uh, one of the areas that we are actually, uh, representing. Uh, uh, on that level on beyond the wire and uh and yeah that's that's it that's why we decided to rename all of all of our uh, existing maps to really to better describe the areas where uh those battles really took place uh well in real life so that's that's it perfect thanks mate and um you know it was some time that the team took to deliberate on that decision and um you know going forward it just seems a lot more um, reasonable to be having these names for the levels that we're bringing to the game. Um, so tonight we're obviously talking about Freeze, which is a uh, a battlefield from the Somme. Um, so can you talk us through some of the inspirations behind this particular level that we're, we've made? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm personally really excited about this one. It's currently one of my favorite levels on Beyond the Wire. It's just, it turned out beautiful. It's it, it's just beautiful. It did, yeah. uh, so uh, Freeze was modeled after uh, its real world uh, counterpart, and that's the you know the commune of Freeze in northern France. Um, and this was uh, a part of what's known as the Battle of the Somme. So it was previously previously actually called just the Somme map. We now are like I said, we're focusing a little bit more into those areas. So we're calling it Freeze, and. Um, it's, it's interesting because this village actually stands to this day by the margins of the river Somme. So it's a place that you can, you know, you can go on Google Maps and, and check it out. And it's, uh, 
uh, it's it's really interesting uh, uh, to go in there and kind of like compare it to, to how it looks like in the game. Mm. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, the story that this level is, is telling is uh, how the, the the allied forces push towards the village, uh, crossing you know like the marshes of the river Somme and uh, all these farmlands and all the trenches that were that were built there, uh, and and went in and captured the village. So yeah, that's the freeze level. Really excited about it. Awesome, thanks, mate. So you mentioned there that the village is still standing to this day, and we can go and look at Google Maps. But Josh, was there anything from the period that we looked at for references for when we were building out this level? Uh, yeah, uh, for sure. So uh, all of our levels are started by looking at a lot of different reference materials. Uh, we look at a lot of uh, pictures and writings and different maps of the area. Uh, my favorite actually to look at is like uh, maps of uh, the front line and how it changed and the geography they fought over during the war. Um, one particular story that stands out for me for the Somme Offensive is a story from some of the Allied soldiers uh, where they started to move out to the front. They were sent out to the front lines and they started out in nice uh, peaceful areas, relatively intact, not much destruction or anything like that. And like each each rolling hill they crested, it was just an image of uh, more and more destruction as they went along, um, until they finally reached the front lines and it was just completely completely destroyed, heavily fortified German held towns. Um, so I think that influenced like the uh, the idea of the level and the uh, layout a lot. Um, we really wanted to capture that feeling of starting out in the marshes as the Allies and making your way into controlled. Uh, German controlled uh, areas and gradual more destruction. Um, for the visuals specifically, we took a picture of a map of the, the general area of the marsh and the river. Um, and then we kind of stitched together different references of the foliage and different parts of the rivers and stuff like that. Um, and tried to create something that uh, the soldiers very realistically, realistically would have been fighting over. Um, so a lot of uh, shallow marshland followed by those rolling hills with the farm villages uh, through the trench lines and then into the German controlled towns. Or with some of our game modes, uh, the Germans have the chance to push into those marshlands, which should make it interesting. Um, so it's not an exact one-to-one -one, one -one representation, but uh, it captures the essence of those areas really well without being too big. Mm. And we just alluded to it there, Bruno, how um, with Freeze, obviously quite recognisable for the Battle of the Somme was these rolling hills. Um, compared to what we've shown previously, what is it about Freeze that's unique? Yeah, so uh, like I said, this is one of my favourite maps exactly because of that. It's so different from, you know, the dense forest or the mud fields that we have represented on the other levels. Uh, on this map, particularly, we were really able to, uh, well, first of all, we have three biomes in it. We have, you know, the marshes, we have the farmlands, and we have the uh, um, the village, the urban area. Um, and you can see a little bit of that on the development uh, blog post that we have, you know, like we have some screenshots in there. Um, and and that that's what makes this level so interesting to me is like this constant progression uh it, you know like constantly we're uh, uh moving into different biomes and it's uh, it keeps the gameplay so so cool and so fresh um and yeah that's uh that's the that's the most interesting part of it uh uh when 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 you go into this uh the, this marshes you know it's all like uh like very very lush uh very wet <laughs> there's lots of water players are gonna ha gonna have to use uh, uh bridges to cross the water uh to go into the objectives to capture those objectives uh once that's once that's captured uh you know like the next step going into the farmlands uh there's you know there's barns there's a windmill there's uh um uh, it, it's, it's a very different type of uh ambient it's almost like an like you just moved into an entire new map and then even that, even after that, there's there's you know trenches to cross, uh, super interesting as well. These are like kind of like half built trenches. Uh, they're not the same type of trenches we've seen on the other levels, so that also makes it very interesting. Uh, they're kind of like rushed uh, to build, like rushing to build those trenches, and then um, and there's you know like 
there's even more after that as you're like crossing, actually crossing the river uh, and moving into the village and, and again, uh, you know, crossing those bridges and it, the players now uh, will battle on this uh, uh, half destroy like, uh, uh, f uh, you know, like this village that's that's being uh, heavily bombarded. Um, so a lot of those, those buildings are completely leveled. Uh, some of them are still standing and, you know, like they're they're, uh, uh, if you can get there, uh, they're really good, like firing positions. Uh, I, I just think that this is going to be a very, very interesting uh, uh, environment for our players to play in. Yeah, for sure, mate. Um, you mentioned it there, but we also spoke in the blog about the variety the map uh, offers um, for different, certainly not visuals, but also gameplay aspects as well. So, Josh, we talked about the going through the marshes and the shallow rivers and onto the open fields. Can you walk us through these environmental highlights and any particular points of interest that we've built? Uh, yeah, so I'd say the the French HQ for sure. Uh, so it's like Bruno was saying, it's, a, it's like a marshland. It's relatively untouched. Um, there's a lot of underbrush and it's going to be uh, pretty interesting because players will be able to hide in there and just like jump out and ambush the enemy. Um, so that would be baked for some pretty interesting gameplay. Um, and further along, you get into the rolling hills, uh, the Somme, obviously, with uh, a lot of small village areas and farms that you can fight through. Um, and it's a bit more of an open area, so that would definitely be it's a different fighting uh, area for sure. Um, moving on to that, you get to kind of the the uh, half built earthen trenches. So you got a bit of cover there, but it's not too deep. Um, so definitely quite different there. Um, they get to more destruction, like the craters and stuff. Uh, and then you get to the German Hill town, uh, which has like the large river. So players will have to cross at uh, uh, different crossings, so different bridges and maybe their types of crossings. Um, and then you get into the more uh, German, the German Hell town with German HQ, which is a uh, probably like the most area urban area we've worked on so far um it's just pretty pretty dense with houses so you have to fight through those houses to capture the german hq um and yeah fitting all these different things into the map uh the size we do is uh was quite a bit of a challenge uh to capture all those things uh but i think we captured the uh, spear of the saw offensive pretty well with everything yeah for sure um and again, I know we've already mentioned it, but the the differences between the maps is, is quite significant. And as soon as you land, certainly in that French HQ, it, you know you're in a different battle, and 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 it's and it's really good. So we're looking forward to getting um, everyone into that map and playing. So Bruno, tying back into where we started and how we've now um, specified maps by the sector that they represent, can we expect to see any more maps from the Battle of the Somme? Um, uh, so it's definitely like still a little bit early to say for sure what's, uh, what's going to be coming, uh, to the, to the, uh, how, how we're going to be covering the battle of the Somme. Uh, but we're really ex excited to be exploring, um, uh, all this, all these battles, uh, more in depth now, uh, and being able to like, uh, kind of like break up those battles, like I said in the beginning and, uh, focus on, on, you know, cer certain, uh, certain areas of of each one of these uh, uh, fronts. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opportunity to to explore the Somme a little bit more, uh, especially because it was such a, an important and, uh, you know, iconic uh, battle of the First World War. Um, so uh, that's, that, that's, that's basically it. Uh, it's early, but we will definitely be exploring uh, some more of that uh, and hopefully bringing more, more of the Somme into Beyond the Wire. Awesome. Watch this space. <laughs> um, so we're going to transition straight into questions from the chat. Um, we like to try and make this quite a consistent thing with our streams now and uh, and capture any questions people have got in the stream. So we've picked one out straight away that we can answer, um, which was from Mr. Wolo Low 98 um, who was wondering how maps are so accurate. Um, do we use any historians and ask for uh, maps from the area at the time? Yeah, so uh, we actually do have a uh, on our team. We have uh, a few historian advisors uh, who are, you know, uh, uh, really 
getting into the uh, the, the authenticity or like really getting the facts for us because you know we we, we uh, as developers we also do a lot of research ourselves but we do have a team that is supporting us with that information and that's incredibly helpful uh it really uh, uh helps us and it's yeah it's just like having this 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 support from from this team is absolutely uh, uh game changing in terms of you know uh, accuracy and um and really uh, authenticity so yeah we do have we are consulting with with historians we uh there is like extensive research uh, happening on the background um of course some of some of the uh some of the maps and uh some of the elements of the war are uh do get adapted a little bit for gameplay purposes because you you don't always want to be sitting on a trench uh you know like like it was in the war like sitting on a trench waiting for for a long time to will eventually go into battle uh since this is a <laughs> this is a game after all right so uh we do try to make that uh uh to explore like the m most uh, uh action actioning moments of that and uh, and yeah so yeah we we're really happy to have all the all the uh all the support that we're getting from our uh history advisors uh, one thing i want to say about that actually uh so very early on we actually did a lot more of the uh the references and hunting down all the stories ourselves and we spent quite a bit of time to kind of get into that mindset of what it looked like in the war and like bruno said it was very it was, it was a waiting war right there's a lot of sitting around so changing that into a game was uh pretty interesting but um very happy to have so many extra people to like look at these references now and do all this because uh, very early on it was quite a quite a task to look through all these things yeah there was actually a moment um one of the first uh uh prototype levels that we created we basically took a uh, uh one of the battle maps like one of the historical maps we got it from a museum um and they you know they had like this beautiful uh uh super high resolution uh uh scan of it and we basically brought that into the engine and we created a map that was like one to one scale to to the trench lines uh, of that area, and um, and it was a map of Passchendaele, like one of one of the battles uh, around Passchendaele. And once we put players in there, like just internally, like just our own developers, uh, we put players in there and and just like you know walked around the map and trying to get a feel of it because we always do that. This one was the, the trenches were so confusing. It was like this incredible complex maze that we've we. That that was the moment moment where it became clear that we couldn't just recreate this, you know, this maps uh, uh, one to one uh, into into our game. We would have to to do like lots of uh, adjustments, lots of uh, adapting it to to uh, uh, really focus on the gameplay. Uh, so even though we're uh, representing these areas um, uh, in the game now, we're not like trying to recreate exactly as they were in real life, but we are. Uh, Trying to get as much uh, as close as possible to how they are in real life, but uh, uh, focusing on on the gameplay, um, and and you know like just it it, it this just uh, uh, makes it for uh, so, so much better of a, an experience in the end, and but it was really interesting to see that as well. Yeah, great reference. Um, next question from Northern Stomper Josh: What factions will be available on the map, and will we see different layers with different factions? Oh, I can answer that. Uh, so currently, we're uh, we're gonna be uh, going into early access with uh, the uh, uh, um, the French, the German, and the uh, American Expeditionary Force, and um, and we do have plans for more factions coming uh, uh, during our early access phase. Uh, there will be uh, different layers uh, uh, representing, you know, like. Uh, Different battles with uh, 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 so basically different factions on the on the same map. Uh, just because it, it, sometimes it's not like super accurately his, uh, uh, or accurate historically speaking, but uh, it's still like a very interesting combat to to be a part of. Uh, um, and we do want to have a, a little bit of that as well. And of course, as the new factions get add, added to the game, we're going to be you know going back and adding 
uh, new layers, uh, including those factions on the uh, already released maps. Perfect. Um, one question, which I think would be just quite fun to just maybe bounce between us, is uh, what are some of the realistic tactical shooters the team have been inspired by? So, Josh, just reel off a couple of your favorites, pal. Uh, I'd say Squad is pretty good. Like I've played that quite a bit now since starting this, uh, uh, so that's been really good. Um, I don't have a whole lot more tactical shooters. Um, that's a good one. Yeah, but that, yeah, Squad was definitely a, uh, one of the well uh, big inspirations for us, uh, and also congrats to them for their release. They just came out of early access yesterday. Mm. So if you didn't check out Squad, go and check it out. <laughs> but uh, other than that, we also played, you know, lots of uh, uh, other tactical shooters. Um, we do like uh, every, like, you know, once a month or a couple of times a month, we do play uh, um, like a game that we are looking into for, for inspiration or for like, you know, the, this element was really cool in this game. Maybe we can, can go in there and, and take a look at that and bring a, a little bit of that spirit into Beyond the Wire. So we played, you know, like Red Orchestra, we played um, we played Hell of Lose, we played uh, uh, all the Battlefield games, of course. Uh, so uh, uh, Insurgency, also fantastic game. Yeah, so uh, those are... Uh, uh, kind of like inspirations, but also like, you know, like interesting games that we feel like uh, 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 kind of like overlap in, in terms of uh, 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 gameplay with, with Beyond the Wire quite a lot. Uh, yeah, I gotta say, so I haven't, uh, like playing them, I'm more much more interested in the uh, tactical shooters that have achieved like that uh, 50v50 with like really good performance. So Hell at Loose is one I've watch pretty closely myself actually and i played that quite a bit now just to kind of get a sense of how they uh accomplished that so well excellent thanks lads um so there's a couple of questions regarding price upon early access release we don't have anything to reveal on that just yet but um that information will be coming out pretty soon tm um so just stand by on that front um, next one, will there be any night raids and will will officers be able to fire off flares? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, no, definitely like uh, um, we do have night maps uh, and we do have flares in the game. Um, uh, even though like we're... Currently, we are uh, reevaluating the use of flares. It's it's part of our uh, uh, plan, even if it's um, more uh, like maybe in the end it ends ends up being more like a, a cinematic or a, a level level uh, event that plays out with the flares and stuff like that. Uh, but we we do want to have that kind of stuff and um, night maps for sure. Absolutely, that's like. It, it has to it has to exist right <laughs> uh it's really fun like uh when you're when you're playing on a a level such as the azincourt which is a part of the argon offensive and that's uh you know like a super dense forest and you're playing as you know like with the assault class um it's just really fun to get into the trenches and you you know like use the melee uh, uh against your enemies uh, it's very satisfying so yeah uh train trades <laughs> And a perfect follow-on from that, which is from Chewy. On a scale of 1 to 10, how likely is it that I can take out more than five German Empire in two minutes with a nail-riddled club in enemy trenches? And I can give you a guaranteed 10 out of 10 on that one. <laughs> For sure. I've, I've seen it happen multiple times. Yep. It's yeah. just a matter, yeah, placing, you know, strategy, all of that, like moving with your, uh, coordinating with your, uh, with your squad coordinating with your team uh you can definitely get that to happen <laughs> i've seen it happen there's some funny clips knocking about of uh people going wild with the club so uh that's that's 100 oh, yeah. percent guarantee um will we see any aviation and will there be any that the player will be able to take direct control of so uh no player controlled vehicles um but we do have some sort of there's airplanes in the game, but not as not in the form of player-controlled vehicles. Yeah. 
Um, Josh, uh, have we mentioned whether there will be a commander role? Uh, I believe there will be a commander role. I think Bruno would be more adept to answer that, I think. For sure, yeah. Uh, it goes a little bit more into my side of things. Uh, we do have a uh, commander role that, you know, um, can call in, uh, uh, well, commander abilities or supports from uh, outside the map, uh, you know, like calling in artillery strikes and, and, and things like that. And that kind of like, it's 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 also part of the plan to uh, to have those those airplanes that I, 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 I that I just mentioned uh, as one of those supports that you can call in from outside of the map. Awesome. Um, so we'll do two more. Will there be dynamic weather, and will it affect smoke and gas? Right. So, uh, di it's not exactly dynamic weather in terms of the weather is not going to change uh, during a match. Uh, you know, the matches are. Uh, uh, I, I don't think it would really make much sense to to have a, a, a like a drastic change of weather during the period of a match. Uh, but we do have weather layers, uh, you know, we do have rain uh, that actually gets your weapon wet, gets your, you know, uh, all your equipment uh, looks different when it's raining. Um, you have like, you know, water, like literally water drops, uh, like sliding down your equipment, which is really nice to see. Um, and it also affects, you know, like uh, uh, the wind on the foliage and stuff like that. So, uh, for instance, playing... Uh, on a, a, a forest level, for instance, on the uh, on the Azincourt, uh, playing it when it's not rainy, uh, or it's not when, when it's not windy, the trees are more static. It's it's very different from the experience you get when playing when it's actually raining, and you know like uh, and you have lots of wind and the weather is just like going crazy around you. Uh, the the trees are all like shaking and uh, it's it's a very different experience for sure. Um, although not dynamic in terms of like you, you're not going to start a match and it's all dry and then in, at the end of the match it's all wet. It's more like you start the match and it's raining and it rains until the end of the match. Perfect. Uh, also, yeah, sorry, I forgot to 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 uh, point it out. Uh, it th this the system currently don't uh, it, it will not really affect the the, the gas uh, warfare that much. Um, but we are investigating options to actually get the the uh, you know our gas clouds to be affected by the wind, uh, so to be determined. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so to finish off, it seems to be a, a quite a popular question: um, Will there be some voice lines when charging, um, like Red Orchestra? There will absolutely be voice lines. We have a fantastic team of voice actors working with us right now. Uh, and they're just doing an incredible job. I, I listened to some of the, uh, of the lines, uh, actually on that video, uh, that we showed today of, uh, freeze, uh, there, if you listen closely, there is a little bit of voice lines in there. Uh, they're kind of like distant. Uh, they're kind of like, you know, like as they're, as the soldiers actually saying those lines are, are like further away from the camera or from the, from the viewer, but you can you can hear some of that in there already and that's something that we definitely want gonna have in the game uh, 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 it, it might not be there for uh, you know our first release on early access but it's definitely something that we are eventually gonna have perfect and then one to go hand in hand with that will there be whistles yes there will be whistles yes. you can't have world war one and not have whistles so uh, yeah they'll be in all right thank you very much gentlemen that was good fun. Thank you for your time, as always. All right. Thank you very much for having us. It's always a pleasure to come here. And thank you to all of our viewers that are uh, uh, watching us right now. 